Yo, do y'all ever spend like five straight minutes just searching for a song that you feel like listening to? Am I in focus? I can't, I honestly cannot tell. Probably maybe like a month, over a month that I've updated on an episode of this. But I'm gonna get back to it. Like I said, it's just, you know, I needed some time for me over the break and now school started, I'm chilling. Uh, and All-Star break is coming up, so now is when basketball season is actually starting. Super Bowl is about to happen, this is when basketball season kind of starts. I only had a couple things that I really wanted to touch on because so much has happened. I think the last time I did an episode was like a little bit before Christmas. First of all, I'd just like to say I am sick at, I I'm just all types of mad residually still at, um, uh, who's the coach of the Pelicans? Got, um, God. Damn, he just looked like a really inspirational black dad, like in the face. Like he's just gonna always tell you something to get you through a hard time. Like Alvin, Gen Alvin Gentry, right? There we go. That's how my brain works. Alvin Gentry, the way that he uh, distributed the minutes of Zion Williamson had me dumb sick, bro. Because I was so excited. I woke up that day. I literally wake up and check who's playing. And that will probably carry, give me excitement that carries me throughout my day. <laughs> like, I'll wake up and be like, oh shit, the Lakers are playing on TNT tonight. It's fucking lit. Like, and I'm just, throughout the rest of the day, I'm just like, I'm looking forward to it. So, I will woke up like, yo, today is Zion's first game. I'm really trying to see this shit. Uh, and, you know, I will usually work nights, uh, but I got home just in time to catch the game. Like, at 9.30, right on the dot. And... We saw him in like spurts, and those first few spurts were kind of slow. It was like, you know, you, you couldn't really get into a groove. You know, he was like, in, um, it's like he's playing my player, and it's his first couple games, and they really won't throw him the fucking ball. As soon as I see that the Pelicans are kind of just like, look like the game is over, going into the third, after the third, I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I think Nico Melli is coming in for him right here. Here's Zion for three, hit it again! Just happened to look down on my phone and see like Zion Williamson hits four threes, makes career beginning like what the fuck, bro? I was so just distraught, like, and I was mad at it's all the coach's fault. Like, what the fuck kind of spurts was that you was playing him in? Like, it was it was so it couldn't hold my attention. Like, I'm a millennial, bro. You can't be doing that shit to my attention span. So. Just because of that, I ended up basically missing the best parts of his debut. The only play that I can remember off the top of my head that I saw was the like, that whip pass he hit to Ingram on the cut in like the first few minutes. That was a good pass. So, outside of that, Zion Williamson, I'm here to tell y'all right now, is Stephen Wardell Stephen Barkley, the second coming. That's the that's the best way that we can refer to him. This thick ass boy, right? He's a big boy, you know. Like he's not like finesseful with it. He's just like hefty, you know. But that's fine. It, that's what makes him him. He's such a force. And then he got like this like ill Danielle Marshall set shot animation that he just like you seen him when he hit the uh, hit the nigga on the wind like mmm and then gets it back. Zion for four for four. Welcome to the NBA. That's somebody that like I really. He has my attention. Like, I will go out of my way to open a stream and just to watch the Pelicans game now. Um, the other player that's like that is actually jo uh, John Morant. I'm gonna, I might touch on him later, but let me just, let me get through these, all right? So I just wanted to let y'all know that this hefty, thick-ass nigga got the ratchet, and we need to beware that this is, this is real. As a sneakerhead, too, I can't wait to see what he does with Jordan Brand. Like, I really, really hope, not hope, I know he's going to get his own, like, signature silhouette colorway but i wonder which one he's gonna pick like maybe the one would be too easy i could see him doing maybe like a seven but i'm i'm curious to that i want to see what the zion shoe the zion jordan is gonna be next up um today is the anniversary i just want to throw it out there of carmelo anthony dropping 62 points at the garden i remember watching that game at home bro that that shit was so special I was, my dick was on brick, bro. God damn, mellow good shit that night. I remember it, Lala tweeted afterward. Uh, and it was just a great night overall as a Knicks fan. And uh, shout out to uh, uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Insert picture, funny as fuck of his jump shot here. Cause this is also the anniversary of him getting like 120 points dropped on his fucking forehead in like a two day span. <laughs> Cause if y'all don't remember, 
Michael Kidd Gilchrist was on the uh, Charlotte uh, Hornets at the time. Were they the Bobcats? I forget. I think they were the Bobcats. And one night he played LeBron in Miami, and uh, that was like LeBron's career night where he hit like eight, nine threes and had like near 60. And then he played Mel right after. And it just. That would fuck up my confidence, bro. <laughs> like, shout out MKG. I don't think he's in the league anymore. Damn, bro. <laughs> shout out you, bro. We remember you too. All star starters were uh, announced last night. So I'll just go through that because that's the most relevant thing at the moment in time that's going to represent how far things have got or how things have gone since the last time I did an episode of this. So in the East, we got. Uh, Giannis, we already knew Giannis was going to be in there. Joel Embiid, which, you know, he's injured, so they're probably going to have a replacement for him. Yeah, I think he'll still be up by then. And now, this one I really fuck with, Pascal Siakam, who is having a much better year than I had imagined, I guess because nobody's really talking about the Raptors, because, like, Pascal is averaging 23.5 points, 7.7 .7 boards, 3.5 assists, a steal, and a block. Now, this is why I really fuck up. First of all, his career averages is like 11 points, 5, 2, and not even a steal in a block. So, shout out to him for really progressing, bro. He was like, it was like my GM. This nigga shot up 10 overall points over the summer, bro. Pascal, you would always see him in the videos of um, just where they were playing in that gym where just fucking everybody looks like a 99 overall. And you would see him in there every summer when he was still like fresh in the league. Like, I would recognize, like, yo, isn't that dude from the Raptors? And you would see him, like, hooping. So, I'm actually not surprised because it seems like Pascal is really, like... And I know he hasn't been playing basketball for that long. He's been playing for, like, 10 years, bro. He's, like, he picked it up late. It's, like, just natural talent met love for the game, met hard work. And it's just, like, you see him progressing quick. So, I, I fuck with that about Pascal. And I love his game as at the power forward position. That's like a really coveted skill set at the four. After that is Kemba Walker, which, I mean, yeah, Kyrie's injured, so we expected that. And last, which kind of caught me off guard, uh, Trey Young. Now, Trey was just like, he was a highlight every single night, whether it was a 40 foot three pointer or a pass, and he's having like a 30, 40 point triple double. So he would have made it anyway, but I didn't expect him to start. I don't know. I just really want to see Trey not on a bad team. I want to know how much of his numbers are empty. Not to say that he has empty numbers, but it's just his numbers definitely, I think, look crazier because he's like the only Amethyst player on the team. That's, that's the, if I put it in my team terms, like he's, he's the only 90 overall on the team. Everybody else is like under 84, 83, if that. So, I want to know how Trey looks in a not shitty setting, basically. I wouldn't say anyone necessarily got snubbed from the starters. I mean, I know some people would say Jimmy Butler. And I fuck with Jimmy. I like Jimmy. But if we're being completely real here, because, like, I live in Florida. Like, I see heat license plates everywhere. Like, I'm in, I'm in uh, Wade County every day. Jimmy Butler, and I think Heat fans would admit this too, been kind of mediocre this year, not gonna lie to you, especially in the clutch, just kind of uh, been a bit of a letdown. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that Miami straight up has a squad, like, they're nine, ten niggas deep, I'm telling you, that T team is just, they got players, man. So if it wasn't for that, I think it would be a bit more evident. As far as the East reserves, actually, let's go through who the TNT crew picked, because my son, Kevin Garnett, with a motherfucking handle, is... I don't know how he's not going to make the reserve team. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Ben Simmons, Chris Middleton, Jason Tatum, Derek Rose, Malcolm Brogdon, Andre Drummond, Drummond, Jalen Brown, Bradley Beal, and DeMontis Sabonis. Those are all the people that could possibly, you could argue, for that reserve spot. Now, Bradley Beal, I wouldn't, no, no, like, exactly like that. Just, I mean, nah. Andre Drummond, nah. Just, nah. Ben Simmons, I'm taking it. It's, it's only fair that you put Ben on there. And to be fair, man, do y'all ever just watch Ben Simmons play and just, just, like, just, like, wish he didn't play like such a bitch? Like, that's the best way to play. Ben Simmons is big and long as shit, man. 
and he be doing the same long ass euros that Giannis does, but he don't even smack like he don't he don't dunk. He literally just he just he just fucking lays everything. Dunk the ball, Benjamin. It be pissing me off that he just doesn't impose how big he is on people, especially when he gets switches into post and shit. Man, it infuriates me that he doesn't play like a like a dog. Uh, ben Simmons, at least he's been playing well while while Joel is out, so I'm not. I'm cool with that. Chris Middleton, the Bucks are literally record-wise like as good as the Lakers, so it's fair for them to have two, and he's like the next best player on the team, so cool with that one too. The Celtics should not have two players on the All-Star team. I'm gonna put this one up for debate for y'all. Who do you think on the Celtics should make the All-Star team more? Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown? I, I'm I'm personally not sure. I don't know. I don't watch enough Celtics to be able to tell you that. I feel like I want to say Tatum, but I think from what I've seen this season, Jalen has been the more consistent Celtic. Correct me. I don't watch them racist ass motherfuckers. Finally, this is the one that I'm the most passionate about. Right here. My nigga DeMontis Sabonis. Bro, this dude's game. I wanna I want I if I could not just make Bam Adebayo in 2K. I would just want to import DeMontis Sabonis, just him. He will dunk on you. He will come off the pick and roll and hit that 17 footer in your face consistently. He will board like he's a a, a, a 6'10", like seven foot bit. I don't how tall, he's gotta be like 6'8". And he has basketball IQ like his daddy. Like if I was Arvidas, I would be proud, man. Cause DeMontis, he's like savvy. Like DeMontis right now is what I would want to have seen from Kyle Kuzma but except this nigga's out here like dying his hair blonde and just being mad Hollywood jump over to the west now in the starters these are all just like you we, we could have all predicted these shits so it's it's I don't even need to check it's Kwai it's LeBron it's AD it's Harden and it's Luca these are the motherfuckers we see every night on TV every nationally televised game that they just advertise in all of their graphic designs. No arguments on any of them. Nobody got snubbed, that's it. Western Reserve possibilities. Chris Paul, Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Nikola Jokic, Brandon Ingram, Paul George, John Morant, who the fuck said John Morant? Oh, it was Chuck. That's some, that's just, uh, that's some really, Charles Barkley shit to say. That's just some, that's, if you know me personally, you know that I like shit on Chris Paul for a living. Like I just do that. I just, it's like residual hate from me being a Darren Williams fan in the late 2000s. So I naturally shit on Chris Paul. I laugh at his failures. Like I, I when I saw him get traded to OKC, I was like, nigga, you are to the night's watch. It's over for you. This is the moment where I just, I, I gotta eat that shit up. Even I can't deny the fact that I didn't think the Thunder would be the Thunder as they are right now. And you have to admit that it's mainly Chris Paul, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, and yo, have y'all noticed the fact that Danilo Gallinari is like a fucking fireman? Like this motherfucker. First of all, Danilo has tore his ACL like four times. Like he's an Italian Michael Red. Outside of that, he just had mad nagging injuries literally everywhere in his body. And shout out, uh, uh, Gallo, because originally a Nick, once a Nick, always. And every time he gets hurt, he somehow still comes back and averages like 16 points and cooks niggas that leave him wide open. Like he's just so good. His game is his game. Whether he's healthy or hurt, he's gonna give you 16, randomly a 28 bomb, and just gun you from three. Like that's that's Danilo. Just their collection of talent and Steven Ad Adams. Shout out Steven Adams. They got it working. They, they made it work and they're in the playoffs, I think. I guess shout out to Chris, you'll never hear me say these words almost probably ever again. Shout out to Chris Paul. I, we all know I'm a Dame stan, like there's no lie about that. He's given me, bro, I won this when I went to uh, the 2K17 event and I saw a Dame and I think I guessed his album name right or something like his first album like they were doing questions for a giveaway he even gave he gave me these i don't know why i didn't have him like autograph them or something that that's i feel really stupid so i hope i'll meet him again one day and have him do that for me i've never used them i'm pretty sure they still work well but it's like a pair of jbl headphones like the ones that like you can get for your my player at the park in 2k that you put over your head but they're like golden 
uh, it's not plated, but it's like painted, like gold colored paint. My camera quality isn't that great, so you're probably not gonna see it all that much, but it's just, you know, like a little memento of the moment, which is pretty cool. So no matter what, you're gonna hear me say, yes, Damian Lillard is an all-star. Is he a starter? Not this season. It's fair to say not this season because uh, the Blazers are kind of mediocre as fuck. And I came into this season knowing the Knicks were going to be ass as always and just threw my little uh, substitute flag on the Blazers bandwagon. You know, when you're a Knicks fan, you have to... If you only root for the Knicks as a Knicks fan, your life is depressing, bro. I'm sorry. Like, I feel bad for you. You're allowed to root for at least one other team that's decent because... When we're good again, then, you know, all bets are off. It's it's orange and blue till I die. So the Blazers, I came into the season wanting to like them, especially since they got mellow, but damn, you know, they look kind of mediocre, and I'm just going to blame Hassan Whiteside. Like, I'm just, it's his fault. It's just, it's the easiest to blame him, in my opinion. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, and, you know, he just left the heat, and look at them. So Westbrook, I can understand why he would be a reserve. Uh, the Rockets can have two people, I would say, so I'm okay with Russ being reserve. Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. I don't know if both of them. What seed is the Jazz? The Jazz are... Oh, they're the second seed. Yeah, you can have them. T you, you can have them. I was talking shit. I didn't even know they were the second seed. Yep. They're above the Clippers, matter of fact, so... Yeah, they can have two. Brandon Ingram and the Hornets are the 12th seed. So, Brandon Ingram is the most improved player this season. No doubt at all. He should win that award. Maybe, you know, if Zion was there, they'd probably be playing better, but I, I just can't say 12th seed Pelicans. He's an all-star. Because he's just like, he's the main option. He's the scorer. Like, he's going to take all the shots. So, I'm not comfortable with it, but I can understand it. John Morant is one of the coldest niggas I've seen in his rookie year, just period. Like, this, I'm watching Ja the way people were probably watching uh, Derrick Rose. Because at that time, I was just really getting into basketball. That's how I'm watching Ja. Like, I, he is so exciting. He's savvy. Like, the, didn't he do the motherfucking hot sauce on niggas uh, when he, somebody, like, he, like, did it and then, like, hit, hit a three or something? Like, I gotta find the, the clip. It's completely fair to say now that I see that the Grizzlies are basically fighting for the eighth spot when we easily could have seen them as like a 10th to 12th seed team. You you should be able to say Carl Anthony Towns if you're going to start saying people like Devin Booker and John Moran. But that, I mean, that's just me. Uh, speaking of Carl Anthony Towns, I just want y'all to know that I'll just place the tweet somewhere here. Like, hopefully he didn't delete it. So... Um, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a like if you did. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna do another one next week. I'm gonna try to do another one next week. And assuming I don't have a shit ton of homework already for some reason. I'm gonna try to play some 2K this weekend as well. So hopefully that'll be coming at you. And I got a completely new video idea that I want to try next week. Um, if y'all have ever seen the videos where people do like swiping on Tinder. It's a variation of that with a twist on it. I don't want to put it out there yet, but yeah, it's kind of like a Tinder video. I'm a, I want to see how this goes. Just, I'm going to play with it. So, see y'all.